Have you ever pondered the intricate connection between your body and spirit? It's a relationship as complex as it is fascinating, one that we are only beginning to understand. A key piece of this puzzle is the concept of magnetization. Imagine a magnet, with its invisible field of influence, pulling and tugging on the iron filings around it. Now, think of your body and spirit in the same way. Through magnetization, a unique separation occurs. On one side, we have the body and the lower level of the vital body, the physical entity that we see and touch. On the other side, the spirit remains, along with its paraspirit and the higher level of the vital body. This is the part of us that is intangible, the part that dances on the edge of our understanding. The spirit behaves as if it were free in space, a cosmic wanderer, although it remains within the body or is only slightly outside of it. This separation and partial escape of the spirit also occurred during anesthesia. This might sound strange, but consider this. During anesthesia, the body can be operated on without causing suffering. That's because the vital body, the seat of pleasant or painful sensations, has escaped along with the spirit it surrounds. It's as if the spirit takes a step back, distancing itself from the physical body and the pain it might experience. So, what does this mean for us? It's a reminder that we are more than just our physical bodies. We are also spirits, intertwined with the cosmos in ways we are just beginning to comprehend. Picture the spirit, not bound by the physical constraints of the body, but free and expansive, navigating the universe. It's within us, yet just outside the body, a cosmic traveler on an infinite journey. Imagine the spirit, free in space, yet within or just outside the body. Intriguing, isn't it? Did you know that everything, grand or small, emanates from different vibrational levels? Yes, the entire cosmos, with all its grandeur and minuteness, is a symphony of vibrations, a ballet of energy and motion. Picture the ether, the fundamental fabric of existence. In its primordial state, it is a high-frequency vibration, a pulsating energy that is fluid, free, and fast. But as it moves away from the central of creation, its vibrational pace slows down. The ether cools, its energy condenses, and it transitions from its fluid state to a gaseous one. It's a bit like steam cooling into water vapor. This transformation doesn't stop here. As the ether continues its journey, its vibrations slow even further. It becomes denser, cools even more, and transitions again, this time from a gaseous state into a liquid one. Think of water vapor condensing into liquid water, but the ether's journey isn't over yet. Its vibrations slow down even further, becoming so dense and slow that it solidifies. It's akin to water freezing into ice. This is the same ether, the same energy, but at a different vibrational level, a different state. So what does this mean for you, for me, for the stars in the sky, for the pebbles under our feet? It means that we're all made of the same stuff, the same ether, just at different vibrational levels. The stars in the sky, the majestic mountains, the vast oceans, the smallest grain of sand, and even you and I, we're all dancing to the same rhythm, the rhythm of the ether's vibrations. This is the beauty of existence. Everything, whether sublime or imperfect, mirrors the ether's journey, transitioning from one vibrational level to another. It's a dance, a continuous dance of vibrational shifts, a cosmic ballet of energy and motion. So, the next time you gaze upon a star or pick up a pebble, Remember, you're not just looking at a distant celestial body or a tiny rock. You're witnessing a part of the cosmic ballet, a dance of vibrations. Just as the ether transitions, so too does everything else, a continuous dance of vibrational shifts. Beyond the depths of the sky, there exists a sphere larger than any of the four universes. Picture this, if you will, a celestial body of such magnitude and grandeur that it dwarfs the spectacle of our known universes. This is the Sphere Laboratory, the cradle of existence and the ultimate destination of all spirits. It is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the origin and the destination. The Sphere Laboratory is not just a mighty sphere in the cosmos. It is the great orchestrator of life and evolution. It is here that the spirit embarks on a journey of evolution, departing from the sphere to traverse the vast expanses of the four universes. The spirit evolves, learning, growing, and maturing over countless centuries, only to return to the sphere laboratory, the creative center, to commence a new stage of evolution. This cycle, this eternal dance of departure and return, is the rhythm of existence, the heartbeat of the cosmos. The spirit is like a cosmic voyager, setting sail from the sphere laboratory, journeying through the universes, experiencing, evolving, 
and eventually returning home, enriched and ready for new horizons. But the Sphere Laboratory is more than just a starting point or a finish line. It is the grand stage where the cycle of evolution unfolds. It is the cosmic laboratory where the spirit is shaped and reshaped, where it learns and unlearns, where it breaks and mends, and where it dies and is reborn. This constant cycle of evolution, this perpetual motion of the spirit, is a testament to the infinite potential of existence. The Sphere Laboratory, in its grandeur, is a reflection of this potential, a symbol of the endless possibilities that lie within each spirit. So the next time you gaze up at the night sky, remember the Sphere Laboratory, the cradle of existence, the grand orchestra of evolution. Remember the journey of the spirit, the dance of departure and return, the cycle of evolution that is the rhythm of existence. The Sphere Laboratory, the grand stage where the cycle of evolution unfolds, quite a spectacle, wouldn't you agree? Ever wondered what keeps the universe in motion? It's the dance of two currents. Yes, it's akin to an eternal cosmic ballet, choreographed by two currents, one electric, the other magnetic. These currents are the unseen puppeteers pulling the strings of the celestial bodies. They weave an intricate pattern through the cosmos, initiating the rotation and revolution of universes, stars, and planets. It's a complex dance, but one that is integral to the existence and functioning of the universe as we know it. Let's start with the electric current. It's the life force that surrounds each sun and then deviates successively to every planet in that solar system. This current imparts two essential movements, one of rotation around their axis and another of revolution around their sun. It's like a cosmic conductor, dictating the rhythm and pace at which each celestial body moves. On the other hand, the magnetic current is the invisible force that shapes the physical phenomena of the cosmos. It generates the chemical combinations, fuels vitality, and promotes health. It's often referred to as the current of life or the vital current. Both these currents, electric and magnetic, originate from a distant sphere, far away in the depths of the cosmos. They travel at extremely high speeds, following a spiral trajectory, wrapping around the universes. As they move away from the center, they slow down, becoming denser and less active, much like a dancer gradually losing momentum after a vigorous performance. But the dance doesn't end here. After the cosmic currents have traversed all the universes, all solar systems and all planets, they return on another spiral trajectory to the central of creation, to the Sphere Laboratory. Here, they are refreshed with new fluidic matter, ready to be sent out again, to sustain the movement and life of the entire creation. So you see, the universe isn't just a collection of stars and planets, it's a grand orchestra, with each celestial body playing its part under the guidance of these two cosmic conductors. These currents, electric and magnetic, are the cosmic conductors, orchestrating the symphony of the universe. Electricity and magnetism, more than just scientific terms, they are currents of life. They are the undulating waves of energy that shape existence as we know it. They are the unseen forces that make our world spin, our hearts beat, and our minds wonder. They are the threads that weave the tapestry of the universe, each strand vibrating with infinite possibilities. Imagine electricity for a moment. It's not just a concept we learned about in school, it's a living, breathing current of life. It gives rise to light, the gleaming stars in our night sky, the warm glow of our sun, or the simple bulb that illuminates our homes. It births heat, the warmth of a summer day, the comfort of a cozy fire. It fuels motion, the spinning of our planet, the beating of our hearts, the flow of our rivers. And it births sound, the symphony of life that fills our ears, from the soft whisper of the wind to the mighty thunderclap. Now consider magnetism. It's not just about attracting and repelling, it's a vital current that generates the very fabric of our existence. It's the architect of chemical combinations, the building blocks of life. It's the painter of physical phenomena, shaping the universe in its grandeur. It's the life giver of vitality, the force that keeps us alive and thriving. And it's the healer, promoting health and well-being. The electric current and the magnetic current, dancing together in a cosmic ballet, create an infinite number of effects. They shape our world and our lives in ways that we can see, feel, and experience every day. They are the currents of life, pulsating with infinite qualities and possibilities. In every spark of light, in every beat of a heart, in every breath we take, these currents are at work. They are the forces that craft the universe, from the grandest galaxy to the smallest atom. They are the silent symphony that orchestrates the dance of existence. 
the currents of life, electricity and magnetism, truly are the lifeblood of our existence. 